Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kate and today is the kickoff for the Barn Star Sampler. I'm going to be sewing out of this book right here. Um, I just thought this, the the blocks in this in this book and then the quilt all together was really like it was to me it was it was stunning so i thought well why not why not just sew it so i wanted to just come on and um and share with you my process and the way i'm going to tackle this um the blocks in this book to um complete the quilt so um i went through the first block which is let me tell you it is not for the fit at heart um but i already committed to do it so i'm just gonna go ahead and just tackle it and um in this first block actually before you start the block there is on page 11 and 12 it has um fabric requirement right here and um, on page 12, it ha it continues, you need a total of 28 different fabrics. I'm not using 28 different fabrics. I am going to use fabrics from my stash, like I've said, and um, I'm going to kind of mimic the color in this quilt, like, um, you know, like use it as a suggestion. The first block in this book requires six different fabrics. And in front of the fabric, it has a it has uh, it has which number of fabric from the fabric suggestion on page 11 and 12. I did what makes sense to my brain. I I numbered my fabrics. So, 1 2 3 4 5 6. And then so when I was picking out my 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 fabric choices, I numbered it also one, two, three, four, five, and six. That way, if I'm using, I'm substituting this fabric for one, two, and three, so I will cut from that fabric and it worked out. So when you go to the actual, the actual cutting, um, I also numbered it. I numbered it the same thing. So I know which color is with which, which letter. So it has it also numbered so I can keep things um, somewhat organized. With that, I have cut my fabrics right here. What um, makes sense to me was to make all of the half square triangles in this um, block because it requires quite a bit. And then I made extra because I went through all of the block and it calls for some half square triangle. I've already made up my mind that my HSTs that requires this size are going to be blue, simply because blue stands out um, in the quilt. The color, the, the navy blue that I have chosen, it will make it pop, so it wouldn't disappear inside the quilt. And then um, I, I kind of laid out everything as as organized as possible. I'm going to show you my process for sewing this quilt. Let's get going on sewing this block. It says cutting up the block. So what I'm doing here is um, letter A and B, I'm going to omit, which is step one. So the step one in this in this uh, block, I'm going to omit, which is A and B because I've already made my HST ahead of time. So that's one step that I'm not going to, um, that I'm not going to do. And so step two is making your, putting your HSTs together. So step two, you're going to need four of your HSTs, which is right here. I have four of my HST and they are pressed open just like that and starched so even if i am cutting my hst bias cutting they will not stretch because i have pre-starched and pressed so that prevents my uh, my my blocks from over stretching and looking wonky 
So I have here number four. This is step one. It wants us to have our light color on the light and then your dark color onto the left. I'm gonna just piece it just like that so I don't mess up. And if you've been watching me for a little bit, you know that on the on the previous um, block that I made with the uh, butterfly body, I switched the teal. And I'm sure y'all let me know about it. And I didn't realize until I was doing the um, editing that I switched it. So yeah, I've corrected it. We are making four of every set. I've completed step one for this, and then I'm gonna put it aside, right like this. Put it aside, step one's done. And now we're gonna do step two. Step two is also requires us to do another HST. So we're gonna put step, this one right here. We're gonna take, this is D. This is what I'm using for my D. Uh, I need four of this. And then a light, four light. I need to make sure the placement is right. So placement is right, the dark is up, all righty. This is sewn to this. Now I'm gonna sew this part to this part. Now that step three is completed, I have pressed open with my fingers on this um, third step. I'm going to put it aside. So step three is done. Now we're going to do step four. Step four. This is my step four right here laid out. It's also called for HSTs. So we're going to sew three HST together in this fashion. Oh, so it's going to be all the lights are going to be pointing upward. So what I'm going to do now is put it together and sew. Step four is completed. So we're going to put it aside and all, we're doing four per each step. So this is done. Now we're going to do step five. Step five also wants us to make more HST and then sewing them together. Let me grab my HST. Now you understand when I said, um, make your HST ahead of time um, because it calls for quite a bit. So we need three HST for each. So three HSTs times four. For these HSTs, the dark are going to be pointing upward and then the lights are going to be pointing downward, meaning that the light will be onto the left and then the dark will be onto the right. Okay, so I'm going to put them like this. Like that. And then we're going to use our, our, our darks. In this case, it's going to be my green. So I got all my greens right here, just like this. And it's going to be for all four, like that. And I have marked on my fabric. I have alpha beaties, but it doesn't, this is not a very big, I don't, it's not a whole quilt. I um, wrote with friction eraser, erasable pen. I can iron this off, it comes off. Um, it's gonna look like this. You see that? So the rest of this three are going to be with this right there. So I'm gonna sew this first. And then I'm gonna sew this too. Then I'm going to join them 
like that. So I have already done it like this. I'm going to press open with my fingers. Now this uh, block instruction said you can press to the side and it gives instruction of which way to press. Um, I am going to press open in this case because there are so many points um, within this block and it feel, by the time you're done making this, it feels like you've made a, a whole quilt. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and take a chance and press open and see how it turns out. Um, my next one, if if um, if the blocks are not as tedious or the uh, the cutting are not as um, tightly together, then I will consider pressing open at that point. So I'm gonna take my dark here. And so, now mind you, Oh, I did it wrong. See, paying attention works. is the last of the four so I'm just gonna piece it together and here we go and this is step five of this block this is step five step five is completed I think it's turning out quite well and um, now we're gonna move on to step six Step six requires us to put all this HST together with a square, but I have not ironed my, my pieces yet. So I'm going to go ahead and press these open. Um, so that way they'll be a little bit flatter before I start connecting, making the, uh, connecting the dots. Um, so what I'm going to do here is press all these pieces that I've been sewing and um, I'm going to join it with um, a square. Um, I'm going to press first before we start connecting the dot. Um, and I will be right back and we will start assembling these pieces. This is what all the squares we've put together, this is what it's looking like right now. So this is the square that all these guys are going to join. So we're going to start putting our puzzles together to make, there's going to be four total that we're going to make of this same block. This is going to be the corner square for the block. So let's start sewing. First thing, this is step number six. So this is going to join to this. This piece have joined this piece. So our next section to be sewn on is will be this piece right here. So I'm going to piece this to this. We're still working on step number six. So this is what we're doing. And I'm going, I'm not a pinner. I'm going to pin this because I want my, I want my, points to match. And the reason why I pin this way, I know it's kind of going every which way, I'm not gonna uh, poke myself. Um, I want it to be able to sew straight down. I don't wanna have to remove it, so I, I have um, my pin under this seam right here, so I can just go straight and sew and I can pull it out when I'm done.
this is the second step of the process for step number six, if you know what I'm saying. So this is joined to this, this is joined to this, and it's pressed. So this is what my back is looking like right now. I've pressed them all open. So what we're gonna do now is piece this to this. With the light, the light will be up facing this way and the dark will be facing this way. So it will look like, it will give it that, that, uh, Kind of like a checkerboard looking. This is what the corner pieces are looking like right now. And step one to six are completed. So the next step is to sew on the side unit. And that is going to be step one within that section. So I have here, uh, we're going to take F and G together. F and G right here. So we're going to make, um, it's called elongated flying geese. So I'm going to take this piece to this piece like this and just so we just like we make flying geese but it's just going to be it's going to be a rectangle like a long rectangle let me move my stuff out of the way we don't need a rotary cutter but we're going to need some pen so i'm just going to sew it just like i would do a flying geese and go for it and we're going to make eight This side of the geese is on. I'm going to sew the other side on. I'm just going to put it like this, just like a traditional flying geese, I guess. And then sew right there. Right there. elongated flying geese will look like. This is all eight already sewn. We've completed step one of making the side unit. We've completed, we completed all this right here, all this right here, we've done that. The next step is step two, and this is what we're doing right here. Um, it wants us to make the another flying geese, but it's going to be an irregular flying geese. Um, I'm going to put that there. That's done. So this is what that irregular flying geese is going to look like. 
one side is long this way and the other side is long this way. We're gonna need four that's going to have the short piece on the left side. And then the long piece is going to be on the right side. And then the next one is going to have the short piece on this side and then the long piece on this side. So I've already made this ahead of time. And what I'm gonna do now is make the one that has the short piece on this side and then the, sh um, I'm sorry, that has the square piece on the right side and then the rectangular, the rectangular piece on the left. And I will show you what all of them look like together when I am done. We're coming close. So this is that right here. And then the short piece is going to go on this side, which is the irregular shape flying geese. It's coming together, folks. This is gonna go on this side. So it looks like we're making regular flying geese, but it's not. Now we've sewn the, the square piece. When you're sitting it like this, it's going. the square piece is going to face you. And then you're going to sew the rectangular piece on to this side. Mind you, the other set, we're sewing four like this. And then we're sewing four where you're gonna flip it. When I'm done, I will show you what they both look like so you don't make a mistake. what I was saying if you see this one this is the square piece and this is the rectangular piece and then this other one has the long piece on this side and then the short piece so this is what they look like if you sit them next to each other or let me just put it so you can see it the right way so the long piece is right here I mean the long piece is right here for this one and the long piece is here for this one I'm going to put it on my design board so you can really see the difference. The long piece is over here, the short piece is over here, vice versa. And then that's the elongated um, flying geese that I showed you earlier. So the next step now is to sew the elongated flying geese together. So we're going to put it, they're the same size. We're going to sew four of them together because remember we made eight. So four on this side and four, four on the right and four on the left. Let me make sure, yep. So four on the right, four on the left, we're gonna sew it just like this, just like that. That's how it's going to be. So I'm gonna sew four of them together and again, making sure that my points don't get chopped off. of the four points matching the geese are sewn together they look like this they look like kissing geese right this part is done I'm going to trim my turn these guys off this loose loose threads there we go. So the geese are on. Now, your regular geese, one of them 
they're both gonna be sewn like this on to the kissing geese that's what i'm calling them so they're going to be like this let me put them on my board so i can show you what they look like so this is what it's going to look like make sure that the direction of your geese are all facing both the same way, which is on the bottom of the point for the kissing geese right there. So the kissing geese are in the middle. The point right here are going to be towards the bottom of both sides like that. So what I'm gonna do now is sew this piece to this piece and then sew this piece to this piece. One side of the geese is on right here. So now I'm going to sew this part on to this part. So I'm still trying to keep them together. This part to this part, that's what we're doing now. that all four of them are sewn together this is what it's supposed to be looking like right now I'm going to go ahead and press my uh, pieces with the seam open these are all done so what we're doing is sewing this piece onto piece this piece like this let's do that <laughs> have one piece this side is sewn on this is just a um, sew and flip and then I'm gonna sew this side on from here to here so everything is sewn on like this and this is gonna be the start point for the middle of the block so we're gonna do this and put it aside the next block is going to be putting our middle piece and we're gonna get the L shape this is my center piece right here it's the uh, tiny beast to the pink um, line so it's gonna be in the middle and we're gonna get this piece right here cut it into fours like that and they're going to be the pe the um, the corner piece, and I'm going to show you because we have to rotate it like this, right? And then we have to put it on the corner because I'm using a fuzzy cut piece. I have to put it this way, and then when I'm done, it's going to be rotated that way. Oh, when I'm done, I'll rotate it straight up, like that. So what the head is going to be like this, and then this corner, this pointy part are going to be pointing this way, like that. It's gonna be like this. Anyway, let me cut it so you so I can make sense of what I'm saying because you may not understand what I'm saying right now because you're going to cut in fours like that. One more time, like that. Put this here because I'm gonna need it again. All right, put, okay, so this is my piece. I'm going to lay down like this. I'm going to put this right here and I'm going to put this like that, right? 
I'm going to fold it in the very middle. Put a crease, fold this in the middle. Put a crease as well, so I know where the middle line is, and then fold my piece in the middle. And put a crease. There you go. So they both have a memory. And I'm gonna put this this way on the middle part. And so. Other side. Crease to crease. The other side. Same thing. This is what it looks like right now. But by the time we sew the next half square triangle on here, it's going to just stand up like, so it's gonna be okay. Now that this piece is done like this, right? We're going to get the next piece, which is right here. There's two of them. They're gonna go on a corner. This piece will go on like so, like this. We're going like this. What I'm going to do now is cut this diagonal and then also cut this diagonal so we can put it on all four corner and it'll be like a square in a square in a square. to make sense of what I was saying, this is what it's going to look like. It's a square and a square. And then when you put it straight up, it's going to look just like that, when it's straight up. So that makes sense. If you're fuzzing cutting, you kind of have to rotate it, play with it to see how your piece will look. And then you can go from there. So I'm doing the same thing that I did earlier Fold in the middle so I can meet right there, right on the point. Sew my piece on and so I've sewn all four pieces together. This is what it, my center piece is looking like right now. We're going to put all of it together. So this four that we did on the first step, we're gonna put it right here. The second step is right here, and then this is the third step. So what we're doing right now is sewing this right here, sewing this right here, and sewing this right here. And then the pressing direction tells you right there, press to the side, um, press this piece to the middle, press this piece to the middle and then press this outward. Same thing here. So what we're doing now is putting it together and sewing all the pieces. We are done, finally.
I am going to meet all these points and I am pressing my points open. So, actually this is going in more than our way. So I'm meeting my points right there, right there, and I'm going to pin. I'm gonna point where all the, I mean, I'm gonna pin where all the points meet. I'm pinning where all my points meet. So I literally pin where all my points meet. So when I'm sewing, I'm sure that my, my points are not gonna shift out of place. Now I'm gonna sew. guys hi well hello again so this is what we've been working on this is what it looks like right now in all of its glory let me step back so you can see you see my deer hanging out um i actually made both of them I have made this before. This is already done. Now I know my points are probably not on point. Most of it are. So I hope you guys would join me in sewing along for this block. You will need to take your time making this. It's a lot of step and there's a lot of points. So do take it easy, take it slow. And I know that um, you could do it. I tried to take my, my time making this step by step without rushing through so you could see um, me doing it real time. Thank you so much for joining me today. And um, if you're not subscribed yet, subscribe down below. If you're new here, thank you so much for sticking with me. And if you are my follower and you've been subscribed from the beginning, thank you so much for your subscription and thank you for watching me. And with that being said, I will see you in my next video. Have a great day.